fact, during Clark's later years in life, his estimated income was $17 million a month tax-free. He lived like a king. And anyway, as the story goes, Clark was made fun of and he came back to the United States. And then months later they sent him a letter of apology and he had requested his men that was working for him to find out what they wanted for these paintings there in Paris. And there's a book, I believe the name of it is The Splendor Seekers, that has a picture of this where Clark had seven wagon loads of gold taken to this museum and he had purchased these paintings which resided for a while in his mansion in the gallery upstairs on 5th Avenue in New York City before it was torn down. And when the mansion was torn down these paintings were saved and they now reside at the Cacorn Art Gallery collection in Washington DC. And this mansion and in its own sense and I have pictures of it here but they're not right here in front of me. Oh yes they are. Okay, let's see, I gotta find the right page. And I can say what I want to say and then I can go right to it. Why don't you hold up the cover of that book first? What is it? Okay. This book here, the title of it is King's Views of New York City, 1903. And the mansion was not built at the time that this book was published for W.A. Clark. However, the book was published for Clark or the mansion? The, well, the mansion it, it, it was not built at the time of this book. However, the mansion was in fact built. And here on page 66 is a picture of the W.A. Clark Mansion Residence Which for Honorable it? William Andrews Clark. Right there in the upper... upper right, right here, where my fingers right. point. This, okay. this mansion... Stop. consisted of over 185 rooms and 34 bathrooms. And in the caption here, it says it was the most costly mansion uh, uh, undertaken or whatever being built at that time. However, you go back in this book to the Vanderbilt Mansion, it says that it was the most costly. And part, this was another reason why Vanderbilt frowned upon Clark's undertakings. Stop. Because Clark, they owned that entire block. Then over the years, um, over the years, they diminished. Are, are you taping yeah. me now? Yeah. Okay, then over the years they diminished. Because other wealthy people had built there. But the Vanderbilts also built extravagantly. In fact, to this day, the Vanderbilt residence in North Carolina, I believe it is, the, the, the Baltimore uh, estate, or Baltimore estate, is the world's largest private owned mansion. Was it as big as the Clark Mansion? Oh, it was way bigger. It, it had a, a well, the, the Baltimore Mansion there in North Carolina, you can visit it. I think it has a garage for 25 limousines and it has over 800 rooms. And the Vanderbilts did everything big. But the Vanderbilts were known for railroad. In fact, one of the Vanderbilts uh, with Jacob Af A Asper, or Abster, I can't pronounce his name, that who, who died on the Titanic, uh, had a private train awaiting for the Titanic right there in New York had the Titanic docked and Vanderbilt made his money off railroad. Vanderbilt built their, the, the subway system there in New York City which descendants of Franklin Lloyd Wright derived from. Franklin Lloyd Wright I believe got his training and his knowledge of architecture and superstructure and, and middle fatigue and, and, and stress factors and his knowledge of building through his relatives who dealt with Cornelius Vanderbilt. 
Vanderbilt was instrumental instrumental in building the subway system within New York City in the New York district and down into Chicago and in part of Boston, Massachusetts, and within that area. Well, what, why did he and Clark? Anyway, uh, why, why did he just because of the way Clark constructed his business, Clark was shrewd, but he was in a way a gangster in his own sense because Clark he made mistakes. I earlier said that he, you know, he, he he didn't make any mistakes, or he was careful. But where he made his mistakes, as he made more and more and more money, he used fictitious, well, some like what Knievel Knievel did. He used fictitious means in constructing in, in constructing his business matters, and in a sense, he got too big for his britches, and he tried to go up against the Vanderbilts. And and, and 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 push out there into the world his existence and his being and his wealth and what he can do and and, and, and Vanderbilt caught on to this and and because of the way he constructed his business and his way he tried to blackmail his way into the U.S. Senate and, and he, which in fact he did get in the U.S. Senate he was voted in and and, and because of the way. He, he, he he threw himself into the business district and, and into what how do you say this this flow of the wealthy he was frowned upon by the Vanderbilts. And why did Mark Twain dislike him? And Mark Twain didn't like him also for uh, well apparently the same reasons because uh, he was pushy. He, 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 what he wanted, he went after, and and, and he, or, or he took it out from under people. Well, what were some of the business interests he had out, outside of Montana? Uh, Clark had the W.A. Clark Wire Company in Pennsylvania. He had properties in the Carolinas. Uh, also, right up here at Flathead Lake, he had built a summer residence, which he called his summer cabin, which is still in existence today. It's a resort up there at Flathead Lake. And uh, 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 he built several mansions throughout the United States during the 1900s and the 1920s. Uh, he had several newspaper businesses. In fact, from what I heard, uh, Clark had learned the newspaper business from some of his dealings within the New York district and famous newspapers throughout New York. And he had brought this knowledge to Montana and his son uh, I think it was J. Ross Clark or one of the Clarks had Montana Free Press and, and they later merged with the newspaper business uh, uh, the Montana Standard at Butte Daily Minor and then they merged and it all became one newspaper uh, the, the, the Montana Standard uh, its existence came from Montana Free Press and the Butte Miner. And uh, what about his uh, holdings down south in the Nevada? Uh, what, what was uh, Clark name? built a railroad from San Pedro to Los Angeles by way of Salt Lake. He needed a place in the desert for supplies, so he bought a ranch in Las Vegas, Nevada. He subdivided it and populated it with his employees. He called it the Las Vegas Town Site. Today it's known as Las Vegas, Nevada, located in Clark County, named after him. And I believe today that the railroad still exists. It's known as the Great Northern Pacific. And these railroads were necessary for hauling his orders through the Nevadas, the Arizonas, the Idahos, and, and up into Montana. And, and what his main goal was to reach throughout the whole entire United States, even into the Pennsylvanias, and eventually get into coal mining. And an interesting story, getting back to the Titanic, is that W.A. Clark's son, I believe it was Charles Clark was on the Titanic and his main reason for being there is he was purchasing mining properties from the Queen of England. From the Queen or for the Queen? Uh, from the Queen. The Queen of England as it turned out there's also a book called Her Majesty's Mines where 
The United States is very instrumental in financing France affairs, English, English affairs,